Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, I'm Penny. I am a master esthetician in Portland, Oregon. Today I wanna to chat with you a little bit about facial oils and I want to give you some recommendations and some tips on how to choose the right facial oil for your particular skin type. Recently, I have been incorporating facial oils into my skincare routine and I feel like it's really made a huge difference in the suppleness of my skin, in the radiance of my skin, definitely in the quality of my skin overall and how firm it looks. Not because I think that these oils are doing anything to firm my skin, but because my skin is healthier and more hydrated, it looks more firm. So I've really been enjoying incorporating oils into my skincare routine, both morning and night. What I have discovered though, is that there are a lot of oils on the market and so many of them would be good for some people, but be tragic for other people. So today I just want to give you two really simple tips so that maybe if you are one of those people who would really benefit from picking the right facial oil, maybe this will help you. If you're new here, I hope that you will consider subscribing. And I also hope that you will follow me over on Instagram where I post all kinds of skincare content on the regular. I will put my Instagram handle in the description box and I hope that you'll check it out. Okay, so first thing I wanna give you two tips. First tip is going to be to understand the ratio of linoleic acid to oleic acid in any given facial oil. Now, oils are comprised of fatty acids and two of them are linoleic and oleic acid. That's omega-6, and omega-9. Now, you really don't have to get deep into the chemistry of any of that. You just need to be able to look and know what the proportion of those two particular fatty acids are in any given oil. So it's literally as easy as Googling an oil and there are resources all over the web, and I'll put some in the description box for you guys, that actually will just give you the ratio of linoleic acid to oleic acid. Now, why is this important? If you are acne prone, prone to congestion, if you have oily skin or you are combo, it is especially important that you know this information because a lot of times you are lacking linoleic acid in your skin. And if you add linoleic acid back in, you can help to balance your skin. And believe it or not, you can actually use a facial oil to potentially help to balance the overproduction of oil that you got going on with your oily skin or your proclivity to acne or blackheads. So even though it's kind of counterintuitive to put oil on oily skin, it can be helpful. Obviously, it doesn't work for everyone. I know that there are gonna be people in the comments that are like, Never, never will I put oil on my skin. And that's okay because everybody is a little bit different. We definitely are all very personal with our skin. And it, unfortunately, these aren't universal. But as a rule, if you are acne prone, prone to congestion, you are oily or you are combo, you want to look for an overwhelming amount of linoleic acid to oleic acid. So you want to see the higher percentage be linoleic acid to oleic acid. Linoleic acid is naturally occurring in our skin and it is super important to our barrier function. And our barrier function is super important to the overall health of our skin. And that is not just hydration. Somebody like me with dehydrated and dry skin, it's really, really important to me to have a good barrier function because it helps hold water in my skin, which is gonna help me look more hydrated, help me look younger. But if you have acne or if you have combo skin or you have eczema, a strong and healthy barrier function is gonna help balance those conditions and help you to right the ship and possibly have less acne, less flare-ups, you know, produce less oil. All of those things can be helped by a healthy barrier function. So linoleic acid is actually a precursor to ceramides. Ceramides are a huge and important component in a healthy barrier. So linoleic acid is very, very important if you are you know, any of those skin types. Conversely, you definitely don't wanna be putting on your skin oils that are overwhelmingly oleic acid. You're already lacking the linoleic acid in your skin. You don't wanna add oleic acid. So you don't wanna add olive oil. You don't wanna add marula oil. You don't wanna add you know, avocado oil. Those kind of things, okay? So that's a really, really important thing to know. And something that has occurred to me is, for example, take Drunk Elephant. Drunk Elephant has 
this really fantastic marula oil, right? It's kind of one of those cult classic uh, products that they have. And their demographic is quite a bit of young people. I think that there are a lot of people that are 25 to 35 years old that buy Drunk Elephant, and that's fine. But a lot of those people that are 25 to 35 years old are also acne prone. They're going through hormonal changes. They may have oily skin. They definitely could have combo skin that just gets congested and they, they have blackheads. And they may think because they're getting into their 30s that they need something like this marula oil to help with moisture and hydration. When in reality, this would be really bad for somebody who is prone to acne and prone to congestion this wouldn't be the right oil to pick, okay? So that's why it's super important to understand the ratio of linoleic to oleic acid. Literally as easy as a Google search and pretty much any oil that you're interested in is gonna tell you that ratio if, if it exists in that oil. Okay, so that is tip number one is to understand the ratio of linoleic to oleic acid. Now. The second tip is to under, understand the comedogenic scale. Now, the comedogenic scale is up for debate. There are definitely people that think that it's bogus and that it isn't helpful at all. I actually think it's a really good piece of information and it's just another piece of the puzzle that's worth taking into consideration. What this scale says is it goes from zero to five. And this scale says that at zero, if, if a, an oil has a rating of zero, it is really unlikely that it's gonna clog, clog your pores. If an oil has a rating of four or five, there's a really good chance that it's gonna clog your pores. So if you understand a, an oil's rating on the comedogenic scale, then you have another piece of information that will be good for you to make the right decision. So once again, if we look at this drunk elephant oil, which I love, it's fantastic for my dry dehydrated skin that doesn't have much proclivity to breaking out. It's wonderful. If you are 30 years old and you kind of break out occasionally and you have some blackheads, this has a comedogenic rating of three to four and it is mostly oleic acid, this would be a poor choice for you. So you would be able to look at this and get that information and then make that decision and say, oh, even though that is a really hyped product that lots of my friends use, this would be really bad for my skin. That is why these two tips I think can help to decipher and weed out the oils that are not good for some of you. Now, if you are mature with dry dehydrated skin and you really are lacking moisture and hydration in your skin, you do not have a worry in the world about congestion or acne in any way, this could be a friend to you. It's a great product, but only for certain people. So that is the second tip, is to know the comedogenic scale and to apply it. I'm gonna link in the description box several blogs that I have come across that give so much amazing information and have taken the time to list various oils and their rating. And they also, some of these blogs will give you the ratios of linoleic to oleic acid. It's an amazing amount of information. I'm gonna list some of my very favorites that I have come across in my research and hopefully they will be helpful to you as well. So rose hip oil, this one is by Trilogy. Now, the reason why I like this, and this is a suggestion of mine if you are an oil newbie, is because it contains one single ingredient. This is certified organic rosehip oil, and that is the only ingredient in here. If you are new to oils in skincare, maybe keeping it really simple is a great way to go because you can easily assess the linoleic to oleic acid composition and you can assess the comedogenic scale uh, rating of a product, and there you go, you got get a good idea. This one actually has a comedogenic rating of one, 
and it is higher in linoleic acid than oleic acid by quite a bit. So this particular oil would be fantastic for those of you with acne prone skin. If you are oily, if you are combo, if you are prone to congestion, rosehip oil would be fantastic. Not to mention that it is anti-inflammatory, packed with vitamin A and vitamin C, so it's wonderful antioxidant. And I really do like this one from Trilogy. It comes in darker packaging to help, you know, keep it stable longer because they do degrade over time. And it also is airtight and it's glass. So it's not plastic packaging. So I really do like this one a lot. Now, the next one we're going to talk about is from Youth to the People. The reason why I wanted to show this one is because it has lots and lots of ingredients. And I know that some of you are going to ask, well, what if it's a compilation of oils? How do I decide where it falls? And I'm just going to show you how I do it. I'm sure other people have a different way of doing this. This is the oil. I kind of wish that this one came in opaque packaging. It is glass. It is, you know, airtight glass. So I like the packaging as far as that's concerned. I do keep this put away so that it's not exposed to light on the regular. It's a really beautiful oil, but let's look at the ingredient deck really quickly. So first of all, I have listed the ingredients by number just so that we can see. So next to each of the ingredients, I have put its comedogenic scale number, and then I'm going to assess by the first seven ingredients, how potentially pore clogging this might be. So you can see that the very first ingredient is sunflower seed oil. It literally has a zero on the comedogenic scale. This also has prickly pear, which is also rated a zero. And you know, you go down the list through number seven, take those seven and I average them out. And overall, this would be a great oil if you are normal or combo. Now, if you are oily, I would probably not use this one only because there are few oils in there that might make you feel greasy. But I wanted you guys to see how I do this. Yeah, it's a little bit of work. I listed all of the ingredients. I looked up each ingredients, you know, scale, number, and I tried to kind of assess how much linoleic to oleic acid was in there. One of these bottles is gonna last you a really, really long time. So taking the time to really assess the ingredients and decide if it's right for you, it's worth it. It might take you an hour or two before you buy it, but it's super important. And if you don't want to put that much effort in, then stick with an oil that has a very simple ingredient deck so that you know what you're putting on your face. Okay, the last one we're gonna talk about is squalane. Now this is from Good Molecules and they're sold out of this right now. I'm sure they'll get it back in stock. So the deal with squalane, you guys, is it's actually good for all skin types and it is fantastic at helping to prevent transepidermal water loss and it is helpful for balancing the skin. It is lightweight. It is naturally occurring in our skin and it is one of those that can really, really help with keeping water in and improving our barrier function. So squalane is definitely one of those that I can recommend for everybody. And it's just a couple drops and you warm it up in the palm of your hand and you press it into your skin. If you are particularly oily, you can use this at night instead of during the day. If you feel like that might just add a little bit too much to the feeling on your skin. I love to use these oils at night and I typically use them right before my last product and I love it. I just feel like it really gives me this supple skin to wake up to. Now, when I use an oil during the day, I use a little bit, one or two drops. I definitely don't use a bunch because you can easily go overboard <laughs> with oil and then no matter what the percentage of linoleic acid is or any of that, you can feel like a grease ball for sure. So use less, less is more during the day, but I'm telling you, it can really make your skin, it can change the texture of your skin and give you a radiance and a glow and it can make your makeup go on really beautiful and I am telling you, if you are dry or dehydrated, oil can make such a difference in the appearance of your skin like that. It can really, really transform your skin instantly to looking more youthful, more plump, more radiant, more glowy. The texture can look improved. It's really, really cool. So if you've never tried a facial oil, 
I, I highly encourage you to test one out. You don't have to spend an arm and a leg. You do need to do a little bit of research and make sure you're choosing wisely. And yeah, let me know in the comments what your favorite facial oils are. And I hope you guys are having a wonderful week so far. And I will talk to you in my next skincare video. Take care.